फाइव काबुली वाला इनिशियल टास्क हैव यू एवर नोटिस दी स्ट्रीट वेंडर्स सेलिंग इन योर नेबरहुड फ्रूट्स वेजिटेबल्स एटसेट्रा समटाइम्स दे मे कॉजेस अननेसेसरी बॉदरेशन बाय देयर डोर टू डोर कन्वेसिंग बट नो डाउट दे आर वेरी हेल्पफुल टू read the story to understand a father's love for his daughter and see how he feels when he is far away from her kabuli wala is one of his finest stories of rabindranath tagore kabuli wala a peddler from kabul is the main character of this story who becomes very fond of mini it reminds him of his own little daughter whom he left in his home country thus the story reflects a father's love for his daughter it is this unconditional love that transcends all boundaries my daughter mini who is 5 years old cannot live without talking she has not wasted a minute in all her life in silence her mother gets vexed at this and would stop her from prattle but i would not i can never bear to see her quiet it seems unnatural and so my own talk with her is always lively one morning when i was writing the 17th chapter of my new novel she came in and putting her hand into mine asked many questions father Ram Dayal, the doorkeeper calls a crow a crow. He doesn't know anything, does he? What do you think, father? Bola says there is an elephant in the clouds, blowing water out of his trunk, and that is why it rains. Father, what relation is mother to you? Before I could answer any of these, she was sitting at my feet. and drumming her knees i was in the middle of the 17th chapter when she suddenly ran to the window and shouted e kabuli wala e kabuli wala she started to call him loudly he was in the street wearing loose soiled clothing of his people and a tall turban with a big bag on his back and boxes of grapes in his hand I thought that he would come in and I would not be able to finish the 17th chapter. He looked up and saw Minnie. She ran away to her mother's protection and disappeared. She had a blind belief that inside the bag which the big man carried were perhaps two or three children like herself. The peddler entered my doorway and smiled. I bought a few things and we talked about Abdul Rahman the Russians the English and the frontier policy Before leaving he asked And where is the little girl sir I wanted Mini to get rid of her false fear and had her brought out She stood close to my chair and looked at the kabuli wala and his bag She refused to take the nuts and raisins he offered. This was their first meeting. One morning, a few days later, I was shocked to see Mini seated on a bench near the door, laughing and talking with the great Kabuli wala sitting at her feet. The corner of her little sari was stuffed with almonds and raisins. She had never found a patient listener like him, says her father. I gave him an 8 anna coin and said, "Why did you give her those?" He accepted the money without demur and put it in his pocket. When I returned an hour later, Minnie's mother was upset that she had accepted almonds and raisins from the kabuli wala. She said, "Oh Minnie, 
how could you take it from him? I saved Minnie from an impending disaster and made a few enquiries. Now, Minnie and Kabuliwala became great friends. The Kabuliwala had overcome the child's fear by a judicious bribe of nuts and almonds. They would often share quaint jokes. Whenever she asked what his big bag contained, he would reply in a nasal accent, an elephant. Minnie would look at his huge frame in all her dignity and burst out laughing. He would ask her, Well, little one, and when are you going to your father-in-law's house? Now, most Bengali maidens are familiar with the term father-in-law's house. But we, being little newfangled, had kept these things away from Minnie. She must have been a little confused at this, but did not show it. She would ask, Are you going there? Among the men of Kabuliwala's class, father-in-law's house meant the jail, where we all are cared for at no expense to ourselves. He would say, I will trash my father-in-law. They would burst into pails of laughter. Minnie's mother would often put in a word of caution. Beware of that man. Minnie and Kabuliwala spent much time together. Once in a year, in January, Rahman, the Kabuliwala, used to go to his country. And he would be busy collecting debts from house to house. But he would always find time to come and meet Minnie. One morning there was an uproar in the street and looking out I saw Rahman being led away bound between two policemen with blood stains on his clothes and one of the policemen carrying a knife. I inquired what had happened and learned that a certain neighbor owed Rahman some money for a Rampuri shawl, but falsely denied having bought it. In the ensuing quarrel, Rahman had struck him. Mini shouted, O oh, Kabuliwala, are you going to the father-in-law's house? His face lit up and he said, Just where I'm going, little one? He was sentenced for some years imprisonment on the charge of murderous assault. Years passed away and he was not remembered. It was autumn and Minnie was to be married that night and the preparations were in full swing. Since dawn, the Shahnai had been sounding and at each beat my heart throbbed. I felt the pain of approaching separation from Minnie. I was in the study when someone entered and saluted respectfully. I could not recognize him, but when he smiled, I knew him again. He had brought a few almonds, raisins and grapes wrapped in a paper. He had been released from jail the previous day and had come to see Minnie. I told him that it was not possible to meet anyone because all were busy with the ceremonies. I was about to pay him but he said, You have a little girl. I too have one like her in my home. I think of her and bring fruits for your child. He took out a small and dirty piece of paper and unfolded it on my table. It bore the impression of the little ink smeared hand. This touch of his own little daughter has always carried with him as he came to Kolkata to sell his wares every year. Tears came to my eyes. I realized that he was also a father separated from his dear little daughter. I sent for Minnie. She was called in red silk with sandal paste on her forehead, adorned as a bride.
Kabuli wala had imagined her to be the same little girl who would come running to him. He said, "Little one, you are going to your father-in-law's house." Mini understood the meaning of the word father-in-law. She flushed up at the question and turned down her face. After she left, Rahman sat on the floor. He suddenly realized that his daughter too must have grown up. He would have to make friends with her again. I took out a bank note and gave it to him. I told him to go back to his country and meet his daughter. I wished that the happiness of his meeting might bring good fortune to my child. I had to reduce some festivities having made this present. I could not have the decoration of electric lights nor the military band. I had intended and the ladies of the family were despondent at it. But the wedding feast seemed brighter to me because of the thought that in a distant land a long lost father met again with his only child vocabulary prattle chatter soiled dirty patient able to be calm without being annoyed demure objection judicious exhibiting sound judgment quaint old fashioned new fangled something that has recently been introduced uproar a loud noise a sort a physical attack impression imprint despondent in low spirits from loss of hope or courage vexed annoyed peddler someone who travels about selling his wares impending about to happen ensuing happening afterward as a result throat beat rapidly flushed became red and hot grammatical structure noun countable and uncountable nouns we know that countable nouns have plural forms we can use a and or the with singular countable nouns the is used before uncountable nouns or when we refer to some specific thing or person example one the hat on the table is new two the boys are here however uncountable nouns are used with a singular verb they usually do not have plural forms but we do not use a or an with them a pick the suitable words for the given uncountable nouns singular and plural nouns you are already aware that we add s es ves or ies to most singular nouns to get their plural forms we may also be required to make a few changes while changing singulars into plurals example lady ladies boy boys leave leaves 
Here are some more rules we follow in order to change singular nouns to plural forms. Some nouns are changed completely in the plural forms such as foot, feet. Some nouns do not change at all in the plural forms such as sheep, sheep. B. Give the singular or plural forms of the following nouns as required and complete the table. Conversational skills Read the following conversation and enact it with your partner in the class. Mihir Vani Did you like the story titled Kabuliwala by Rabindranath Tagore? Yes, I liked it a lot. In fact, I found the discussion about the characters and the plot very interesting. The teacher also told us about the life and work of Rabindranath Tagore. It was very informative. Yes, it was. Whose character did you like the most? Mini is my favorite character. What about you? I liked Kabuliwala the most. I want to read other stories and poems by Rabindranath Tagore. Me too. We can get books from our school library. I saw a collection of his poem in the library the other day. Okay, I would like to read some of his stories first and the poem later. Alright, I will get some books for you. Let's listen. Listen to the passage carefully. Rabindranath Tagore is regarded as one of the most distinguished writers of India who created literary masterpieces that are widely read even today. He won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1913. Rabindranath Tagore was born on 7th May 1861 at number 6 Dwarkanath Tagore Lane. Jora Sanko the address of his family mansion. He was the youngest of 15 children born to Debendranath Tagore and Sharda Devi. His family was one of the art lovers. Rabindranath Tagore was nicknamed Rabi. His mother died when he was very young. His father was mostly on tours. So, he was mainly brought up by domestic help in the household. As a child, Tagore was not allowed to leave the family compound for any other purpose than going to school. He grew restless for the outside world, vast open spaces and nature. Tagore started writing poems when he was about 8 and was urged by the elder brother to recite them to the people in their mansion. Tagore experienced first close contact with his father when they set out together on a long tour of India. In 1878, Tagore travelled to England for higher studies. He read the work of Kalidasa in his childhood and works of Shakespeare later. Tagore was very close to one of his sister-in-law named Kadambari. Her death in 1884 affected Rabindranath Tagore and he felt devastated. However, he continued to write poems, plays, short stories and novels. India's national anthem, Janaganamana, as well as the national anthem of Bangladesh, Amar Shonar Bangla were composed by Rabindranath Tagore. 
He died in August 1941. Now answer the questions orally.